Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, first, I'd like to take this opportunity to, uh, to thank uh, WSO2 for this opportunity uh, to um, allow us to present our uh, e-government uh, journey. And uh, um, I hope that uh, we have an opportunity to discuss a lot of it uh, since uh, it is also uh, very uh, new for us and uh, we hope that uh, through this uh, discussions uh, we can uh, make improvements to it. So, uh, okay, so uh, for... Thank you. Uh, for for those of you all who uh, uh, haven't heard about Bhutan, which is highly likely because Bhutan is a very small country, uh, um, it's uh, it's a very small country uh, north of India and uh, uh, south of China, uh, in the foothills of the Himalayas. Uh, we are uh, small in size as well as small in terms of our demography as well. We are just uh, we don't even have a million people in Bhutan, so. It's extremely small. Um, <clears throat> um, we have uh, the country is divided into twenty uh, districts uh, and further subdivided into around two hundred and five uh, geogs. These are blocks of villages. Um, and uh, in two thousand eight, we uh, uh, we became a, a democratic uh, constitutional monarchy. Uh, which actually was uh, an initiative pushed down by the king himself. So before that, we were an absolute monarchy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's so uh, to talk about our development philosophy, we <clears throat> we believe that uh, um, gross uh, national happiness is more important than uh, GDP. Uh, the reason why we believe that is because it, it, uh, we believe that it is a more holistic approach to development rather than only looking at uh, economic uh, growth, which could be uh, misleading in some cases. Uh, we believe that we need to look at uh, uh, development while considering not only uh, um, the the happiness of uh, the citizens of the state in the present time, but as well as those citizens that were that are yet to come uh, uh, as citizens in the future, because uh, we believe that uh, ensuring that we look after the environment, uh, ensuring that we preserve and promote our culture, uh, is also an important uh, aspect of development. Um, Besides the economic development as well as uh, 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 in, uh, providing the uh, governance uh, for those uh, holistic measures of development. Um, so this nicely <coughs> fits in with our uh, ICT vision. Um, we believe that uh, uh, Bhutan as a small country uh, needs to focus on um, on ICT uh, to create a society that is, uh, 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 to create a knowledge society rather, uh, as a foundation for gross national happiness. Because the state must endeavor to provide the conditions so that uh, the citizens have the ability to pursue happiness. Okay, um, broadly speaking, um, um, Major uh, development on ICT in Bhutan started uh, sometime in 1999 uh, when we introduced uh, internet. So it hasn't been a very long time, but uh, we have made uh, great strides in terms of uh, developing infrastructure uh, for Bhutan. We have uh, a, a fiber optic uh, you know, uh, infrastructure that goes down to the block level. Uh, we have uh, um, almost 100% uh, coverage in uh, mobile uh, connectivity. We've also provided uh, um, 
because our literacy is not very high, we are uh, around 60%. Um, we've also provided uh, uh, points of uh, contact for citizens, those who are not able to apply for services themselves through intermediaries, through our community centers, which are present in almost all the community centers. Uh, <clears throat> we've also uh, enacted legislation for which empowers uh, um, the use of digital signatures, uh, digital, uh, the validity of data messages, etc. cetera. Um, and we've also uh, taken an approach to provide online services, all, you know, very similar to uh, other states. Uh, actually, we've also, uh, very early, in fact, sometime uh, around um, uh, 2000, I believe around 2010, we adopted uh, WSO2's uh, Enterprise Service Bus. And this was uh, done because we needed uh, uh, to provide online services to our citizens. And to make it easier for them, we used the, the Enterprise Service Bus to extract citizen uh, information from our uh, National Citizen Registry. Uh, so that started our uh, journey with uh, WSO2. Um, we've also uh, put in place uh, a private uh, network for government. This connects all our government agencies uh, at the central government as well as the local government level. Uh, we actually have uh, very ambitious plans to take uh, fiber connectivity down not only uh, to the uh, administrative blocks, but also connecting all the schools, all the hospitals uh, with high-speed uh, connections. Uh, we've also uh, centralized our uh, government uh, infrastructure. So in the past, we used to have, every government agency used to have their own server rooms uh, with uh, limited infrastructure, with limited capabilities to manage that infrastructure. So we've actually centralized all of that in one uh, government data center. Um. Okay, uh, to talk about ICT, I mean, to talk about software, rather. Um, um, in Bhutan, we've had uh, um, quite a number of years where a government has been investing in IT uh, projects in software. Uh, however, because of the setup, you know, the way that uh, uh, ICT personnel were deployed in government agencies, uh, there wasn't uh, uh, any standards that were being followed. We had uh, government agencies uh, investing in monolithic applications independently and um, not following any particular, you know, uh, platform nor any particular standards. So we, we had a lot of successes and we had also a lot of failures. We had uh, systems that, that, were, uh, that failed right after the project ended, you know, with, uh, with uh, the ICT professionals not having the, the ability to actually provide support for those systems. So uh, we felt that uh, uh, a centralized, a common approach was necessary. And uh, because of that, uh, we first started off by centralizing all the ICT personnel in, uh, across the government. So now all ICT professionals, although they work in the respective departments and ministries, education, health, and so on and so forth, they still report to the Department of IT. We are the central nodal agency for all ICT professionals. And uh, we work with them to set standards so that a common, uh, to some extent, a common platform can be adopted a more centralized approach to investing in ICT. Uh, the next step that we took was uh, coming out with this e-government policy. It is not yet enacted, but it is in a very advanced stage. Uh, we now only need to present it to cabinet for endorsement. Um, the approach that we've taken here is that uh, we believe that uh, the best approach to providing services to our citizens is if we uh, provide it online. So digital by default. Um, uh, we believe that uh, the greatest benefits from technology 
can be uh, gained by the state if we uh, make optimal investments in ICT. Rather than having every agency invest in silos, uh, we need to take a coordinated approach to um, the specific uh, assets that the government invests in. And because of that, we've, uh, <coughs> we've uh, taken a, a slightly regulated approach to how um, uh, government agencies will invest uh, uh, in ICT, whether it is infrastructure, whether it is uh, IT uh, systems, they need to uh, get an approval uh, uh, from a centralized governance body before they can move ahead. Uh, this ensures that we remove uh, a duplication of effort. This ensures that we also are able to adopt standards uh, for better interoperability, for uh, ease of uh, management, etc. Uh, we also uh, believe that uh, data is an asset. Uh, however, we need to make sure that um, that uh, the, the data available in government is uh, of a certain quality. Right now, uh, the issues we have is we have multiple systems having, uh, uh, multiple agencies rather, managing the same information again and again. And uh, because of this replication uh, and redundancies, we have a lot of complexity in managing data. So the idea of the single source of truth is that for any data that uh, is available in or is required by government, uh, a particular agency will be identified and that agency will be the custodian of that information. So um, if data already exists in a particular agency, that data must be shared. Um, we also believe that uh, information security and privacy is uh, extremely important uh, uh, concern. And because of that, uh, we believe that it, uh, information security and privacy is, an, is a holistic approach, is a holistic responsibility, rather. Uh, at the moment, information security, or rather people uh, think of it as IT uh, you know, security, is the responsibility of only the ICT professionals. But we all know that uh, the users, the people who are authorized to have access to systems, have the most ability to actually, uh, you know, uh, uh, damage systems or even uh, uh, accidentally or intentionally, uh, you know, leak information. So, uh, it we believe that we need to take a holistic approach to security. Uh, we also believe that uh, we cannot invest in technology for the sake of technology per se. That is why we believe that any IT investment needs to have a business uh, champion. So th uh, there has to be a specific business use case behind any technology investment. We also believe that um, IT investments uh, in Bhutan, we have uh, uh, a misunderstanding uh, on what an IT investment is. Uh, People believe that uh, the upfront capital cost is all it takes to actually get an IT system running. Uh, however, the cost of actually running a system is far larger than what it actually costs to bring it up. So uh, now we are actually uh, getting agencies to think of uh, what is the total cost of ownership rather than you know the capital investments when they put up any projects. Um, so earlier I mentioned that we have a, a, a centralized uh, governance mechanism to ensure that uh, we are able to regulate to some extent how IT investments are carried out in the government. And uh, uh, this is the uh, uh, governance structure that we have. At the lowest level, we have a review committee, which is a technical body. Uh, it consists of technical uh, people that carry out uh, the first level of uh, review of uh, systems. And if there are issues or inconsistencies uh, or uh, rather disagreements with agencies on whether the investment needs to happen or not, uh, these issues are escalated to the government executive uh, you know, uh, committee, which in consists in our case of our finance, uh, our uh, 
uh, our Royal Civil Service Commission finance is from a budgetary concern. Uh, our Civil Service Commission is the uh, constitutional body that uh, is responsible for hiring uh, additional bureaucrats so they can actually have a say in terms of uh, whether the investment uh, needs to happen because additional manpower would be necessary. Um, and of course, uh, the Department of IT and Telecom. Uh, above that, we have our uh, the council, which consists of mainly government secretaries. So we believe that IT is, uh, investing in IT is so important that we actually have to go all the way up to the cabinet because, uh, as I said, business-driven uh, technology and uh, decisions actually um, may have uh, disagreements at uh, a very high level in government, and those kind of transformations would require intervention even at the cabinet level. Um, so this is the uh, overall um, blueprint for our uh, one government approach. Uh, the idea being that, uh, of course, this is still in uh, uh, work in progress. Uh, what we have done is uh, we believe that um, the government needs to, uh, is one entity. And although we have multiple uh, stakeholders, multiple ministries and agencies, we need to have a single uh, uh, window for citizens to apply for services or uh, across government. And because of that, we have a single point of entry uh, for all citizens, a single portal, um, and a single uh, sign-on mechanism uh, so that they, uh, through this, they will be able to um, um, get access to multiple uh, services across government. Uh, we also have <coughs> a single uh, information exchange layer, uh, uh, mainly on WSO2 products, uh, as well as our identity manager. Uh, management uh, is also on uh, WSO2. And through this uh, uh, information exchange layer, we uh, will um, uh, empower government agencies to share information. So um, if information, I mentioned earlier, if information already exists in government, that information must be shared with every other government agency. This reduces uh, complexity in managing data as well as uh, it improves uh, um, you know, the utility of the monolithic applications that we already have. Um, so uh, since uh, I would like to actually have more time for question and answers um, and suggestions, I think uh, I'll go quickly forward. Uh, this is the actual uh, data exchange gateway. So we have our integration layer, which uh, I think when we were uh, in the uh, you know implementation phase, we actually had the enterprise service bus and the and the and the data service server uh, separately. Now, I think WSO2 has data integration uh, uh, package uh, as one. Uh, we also have the API manager. We um, we don't uh, allow um, access to data through the uh, the integration layer. Everything is provided as APIs and uh, made, uh, and it's accessed, uh, you know, uh, through the through the API manager after it is authenticated uh, from our identity server. Um, there's still a lot of work uh, to be done, especially in terms of uh, identifying uh, who the custodians of data will be, uh, you know, for our single sources of truth. Uh, and uh, um, we have uh, a lot of expectations uh, uh, from this architecture. And um, the strange thing is technology is moving so fast. We, uh, we thought we were fairly, you know, uh, advanced when we, when, we, when we looked at this architecture. Now we're talking about cell uh, cell-based architecture, so we are again behind. <laughs> uh, 
So uh, these are some of the products that we are using. So we go beyond uh, WSO2. We have uh, also other uh, open source uh, uh, products that we are using uh, for our architecture. Uh, I'm sure m all of you all are familiar with it, so I wouldn't go into it. Um, uh, and these are some of the uh, APIs that are already ready for uh, deployment. Uh, majority of uh, the information that is being used is relating uh, to these uh, these APIs uh, that we already have. So uh, thank you. That's all I have for my presentation. If uh, 